Ice crown. A monument to our suffering. In more ways than one, it would seem. Oh, you knew this was going to happen. Every single one of you that saw that cinematic and also watches these dailies thought to yourselves, I bet Jack is going to have something to say about this. And were you ever right? So here's what we're going to do. We're all going to watch it together. And since I'm going to be pausing it and commenting on it as it goes along, if you haven't seen this cinematic yet, I highly recommend you watch it through on your own first. And once you have, once you're all caught up, let's all just gather around and go on this journey together. The veil between life and death. Why, though? Have you ever heard Ice Crown Citadel called that? I haven't, but maybe I'm just misremembering. Unless we're about to retcon something, and we want to act like it was maybe always the case. So we just add one throwaway line like that. Or maybe I'm just misremembering. Whatever the case, this is a minor nickel. It, it, it gets better. Where a usurper sits on a frozen throne. I cannot stand her delivery here, but this isn't specific to Sylvanas, or this cinematic, or World of Warcraft, or Blizzard. This is just a super tropey fantasy cinematic delivery style. It's like narrated exposition with unnaturally long pauses in between each sentence. And it's just, it's so tired. But even aside from that, it's just corny. It's just there to make things sound cool. And you can do it with anything. You can do it with your own life. I stepped into the kitchen where I saw a bowl of cereal. But little did I know those cornflakes had already begun to become soggy. It's just like amateur hour storytelling mechanism. It forces me to be aware that you're telling me a story. It is the exact opposite of immersion. And Blizzard loves to do this. But let's keep going. But no king rules forever. Dramatic pause. You know what, to be fair though, that's a really cool shot. Her, apart from the throne, looking up at Bolvar, the line of silent dead, the stillness of it, it invokes tension effectively, it's rising action compacted into a few seconds. That's well, you gotta give credit where it's due. Well done. Just tell me what you see when you look at this face. Pretend those retarded eyebrows aren't there. Just focus on the face itself. I am so tired of seeing this expression worn by female action heroes. Because, like her delivery, this is here to make her seem badass. Oh, look at the way she's looking, man. She's got her head slightly tilted down. She's looking up with her eyes, and her lips are slightly pursed. Like she's totally perturbed. Isn't that badass? No, in fact, it is not. It looks like she's here to talk to a manager. Oh, fade to black. Where are all the skeletons? Was that the last one? Did they just fade to black and she killed 
How many were there? You know what, though? I'm, I'm glad they faded to black. Because the only thing dumber than conveniently fading to black so that she can kill an entire army would be showing her kill an entire army. Hasn't she been at war with the Alliance for who knows how long? If you can just, if she can just kill an entire army by herself, and I mean, the whole reason Bolvar is the Lich King is because he was trying to contain an army that was so dangerous that the, that the combined might of the Horde and the Alliance and all their leaders couldn't hold it back. Now, I know his whole army isn't there, but still, this is goofy. Okay, if somebody throws a 90-ton chunk of rock at your face and you shoot a hole in it, you're going to get obliterated by a 90-ton chunk of rock with a hole in it. It wouldn't become two separate masses with two separate trajectories conveniently wide enough that neither one touches you. This is... First of all, how did Bolvar do that? That was never a Lich King power. Throwing giant rocks with telekinesis, right? Or was it? Was it a Fires of the Life Binder power? I mean, that's weird to begin with. The dragon breathes fire on you, you become a fire zombie, and also you can hurl giant rocks. Could he do this before? Or is it just there to look really cool? Yeah! This is like the storytelling equivalent of a six-year-old kid playing with his toys. Yeah, like, Sylvanas is so badass! She comes in, and she's like, Oh, I'm gonna say something really badass and slow. With, like, pauses and then Bolvar's like whoa I'm like glowing different colors and I'm gonna throw and I'm gonna throw mountains at you but then but then Sylvanas just goes like whoa and he throws another one and she's just like whoa and he throws another one and she shoots it with her bow and it like splits the whole mountain in half what are we watching is this children's cartoons Okay, cool. Whoa! Whoa, she dodged again! You know what really annoys me about that particular part? The smug little grin before he throws another 90 ton rock at her. Like, it's just not cool to be smug in a life or death struggle. That is just, I'm so tired of that. Seems to happen more with female characters for whatever reason. And again, it's just, it's like, I don't know how many writers there are, but I feel like Sylvanas just has one writer and that's all that he or she writes. It's just Sylvanas. And she's just like so cool. And in the face of otherworldly threats and annihilation, she's just like, <laughs> she just grins, because that's how insignificant the threat is to her. Oh, really? Okay, then. How are we supposed to be invested in the idea of a conflict here at all, then? But who smugly grins against any real threat, even a small one? Like, what does that tell you about a character? It tells you that they're a cartoon. What? When? What kind of steroids? When has that? Oh, okay. I missed out on Battle for Azeroth. Did she just spend the whole time at the gym? She could just throw that? Like, even Bolvar couldn't do that. He had to use, like, weird magic. If she can just lasso a small mountain and hurl it, why even dodge the hammer strikes? Why not just 
Grab it. Take it out of Bolvar's hand and throw it into the sun. What even are her powers anymore? Like, what's the theme of her powers? Besides winning. Winning and being smug. That's what Sylvanas is. And it's just... It's just intolerable. It's just like a character equivalent of being one of those people at the party. That when they come in, everyone's just like, oh, oh God, here's Sylvanas. She's making that face again. Oh, so you do know what happens if you try to punch a hole in a 90-ton rock flying at you, Blizzard. It's just, it only happens when it's happening to someone that you want it to happen to. Visually, obviously, that's really cool. Storytelling-wise, she just brought the Lich King literally to his knees, and she's not even breathing heavy. So therefore, how is it really an accomplishment? Do you realize what you've done in setting the scene up this way, Blizzard? It doesn't make Sylvanas look strong. It makes an already established powerful entity look silly. Because there's been no setup for this. And you don't get to say it happened off screen. You can just do anything that way. There don't have to be any rules or consistency to your storytelling whatsoever if the reasons behind events just happen off screen. And there's already a lot of speculation as to why this is happening from people. There are people rushing to the defense of the shoddy writing and saying, she made a pact. Well, now they might as well talk like that writer. She made a pact with the darkness. Okay, but that's dumb then. It was dumb to do the cinematic in this way if that's what happened. Because there's been no transition, there's been no development that the audience was a part of whatsoever. It's just jarring. And it's for the sake of getting where you want to go. It's, exp it's lazy, it's expedience. Cartoonishly goofy expedience. I mean, imagine, imagine this mechanism applied to a different conflict. Imagine you're watching Batman, and there's a scene where Catwoman shows up at Mr. Freeze's lair, and he blasts her with his freeze ray. Uh, at first she makes that stupid face, and he blasts her with his freeze ray. She smiles, pulls his head off, throws it down a bowling alley, and gets a strike. You might have some questions as the viewer, and if the answer to those questions was, she made a pact, and you'll find out about it later, that would be wholly and understandably unsatisfying, even when it was explained. I mean, there's already history and tension between the Lich King and Sylvanas, and yes, it was more specifically with Arthas, but it's no accident she called Ice Crown a monument to her suffering. It's about what undeath represents to her and the source of undeath. The Lich King wasn't always in Azeroth, so there's a history, there's a tension. There are things that have been built up and crafted carefully over time. And you can't just make things happen off screen. It's like in the middle of a chess game, taking your queen, making her fly in the air, and strafe all the opposing pieces with napalm, declaring victory. And when your opponent is like, what the hell are you talking about? Being like, well, she, she made a pact. You didn't see it. I'll explain it later. No! No, you don't get to do that. I mean, I guess you can, but then your story is just a gulp of warm piss. To wield so much power. But not much power compared to you. That power will be your prison. This world is a prison. What? Just real quick, where are the rest of the Scourge? You know, the army so vast that it would have destroyed the entire world had Bolvar not made the sacrifice he did by sitting on the throne. Where are they? He sent them all far away? Even the Flyers? And the undead Nerubians? I mean, not that it would matter, I guess, right? Even if they all showed up, she'd just make that dumbass face at him, and we'd cut to black again, and... <sighs> Read. 
Really? Then what? What about the what? What even was the when you killed Arthas at the end of Wrath of the Lich King? The ghost of King Terranus says there must always be a Lich King. Otherwise, the scourge will run rampant and kill everything. That's why Bolvar chooses to sit the throne. Now I know it's it, obviously they could make up whatever they want. They but why do they, they could have just? There was no point in any of that if you're just going to come back later and break the helmet. Because now they're going to have to contrive a reason as to why the Scourge won't overrun everyone like they said would happen before. And they will, because I assure you, the next expansion isn't going to be the Scourge destroying all life on Azeroth. There's going to be some reason that they just write up that that doesn't happen now. And therefore, they could have just done that before. Which would have been better. Rather than making it seem like there had to be this thing in place and then just knocking it down later. No, this has to be here. Because it was weird in the... F it was weird that it even happened in the first place. Like, when it happened, I'm like, well, why? Why, why can't they... Why can't this just be the end? Oh, well, it must be because they intend to have the Lich King as a villain again one day. No, apparently not. Apparently, it actually could have been the end. And why does breaking that helmet break the sky open to this mirror image world? It's just, it was enchanted armor made by the Burning Legion to house the spirit of the Lich King. There's nothing, as far as I know, in the lore that says that breaking it would open up a barrier between worlds. <sighs> Oh, and I'm sorry, but why can she even do that? They literally just break it in half with her hands. She made a pact, bro. She's like really strong now. Even though she just looks like a purple hot girl. But there's more than meets the eye with strength, bro. You can look like a hundred pound girl and throw mountains. It's fantasy, bro. Well, it's hatefully stupid. You know, they never gave her the proper sacrifices for the power that she had to begin with as a character. I have always disliked this character. It, it never, she's an echo of Kerrigan is one of the problems because she already was this haughty smug, making that stupid ass face and in, in front of danger type character to begin with. And then she gets captured and, 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 and falls to this overwhelming elemental force. It's the undead for Sylvanas, it's the Zerg for Kerrigan. But they could not stand to actually kill their cartoonish, smug, smirking in the face of danger character. No, 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 no. Neither one of them. Both of them had to become agents of the force they were overwhelmed by. But even that wasn't good enough. No, no, because then they wouldn't be strong, independent women. So they had to become leaders of the force that they were overcome by, replacing the far cooler figures that originally led each of those forces, the Overmind in the case of the Zerg. And, well, the Lich King still existed. She, she made her own faction, the Forsaken, which was just so disappointing that when WoW came out, I'm like, I don't want to be part of the Forsaken with this whiny, always complaining about the fact. Always complain. What are we if not slaves to this curse? Well, you still just look like a hot girl. Like, how are you? All it did was make you way more powerful. And you're not going to die from old age. And you're not, like, to what extent was she ever really undead? I mean, practically. Like, I know she's called undead, but she just got to be like a darker night elf. No decay, no limbs falling off, no hideous rotting away. I, I could see her calling it a curse if that was, if she actually had to be undead. I could see her saying, oh, what are we if not slave to this curse? But no, well, there was no downside. There were so many cool ways they could have done that, that they could have made that character and justified her hate for what she became. Even just purely incorporeal, because she was a banshee originally, and written that into the character. She's tired, but she can't sleep because she needs a body to sleep, and she can never, it never shuts off for her. She always just has to see and be aware, and it's agonizing, and she's trying to hold on to her sanity, and has to figure out how to be a leader through that. You know, the at least originally, her story arc in Warcraft 3 was about using subterfuge and political intrigue and alliances. And it was compelling in that regard, at least, at least, and mind control. Now she's just Goku. It's not good storytelling. It's not good character building. It's not compelling. It's not relatable. No one is like that. And people that think that they want to be like that are insufferable. <sighs> let's just, let's just keep watching. 
set us all free. Why was there such a pause between? And she will set them all free. That's how that writer pitched it in the board meeting. She like pauses. You got to get like a good three to four seconds in between all and free. Just so you can know just how badass she is. Uh, okay. But how does she rip that helmet in half? Because like she's so badass that when she screams, she can like rip the fabric of reality apart. Like she's Tetsuo. I just. I can't. There is a reason why the ratio here. Let's take a look at it. Seventy-five k to twenty-six k. I'm not the only one who thinks this is. Let, let, let's see some of the comments. <laughs> the Lich King. That crown will be your prison, Sylvanas. Yeah, but did you know we're living in a society? The world is a prison, has the same weight as we live in a society. Yeah. Yes. This feels like actual fan fiction. Well, yes, it is. Look how they ma look how they massacre my boy. Sylvanas must have typed "Who's your daddy?" before soloing the that, that was that was, it was a cheat for Warcraft Three that put God mode on. The Lich King kind of forgot his power. Feels like the last season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> no, I, it would have been less stupid if Arya randomly just leapt over all the scourge and stabbed him and they all died. That would have been less dumb than this. How did she jump that far? Did she get in a trebuchet? Why are there so many bad writers? I can't stand it. Oh, I... There are a lot of people saying, as they rush to the defense of this colostomy bag of a cinematic, that Bolvar couldn't win because he didn't have Frostmourne. Arthas would have won because he had Frostmourne, bruh. Okay, Frostmourne is a very powerful weapon. I'll give you that. It can steal people's souls. Does it really matter how strong it is if Sylvanas can just go, Well, I mean, it, what, how, if Arthas couldn't have landed a blow with Frostborn, it doesn't really matter how strong his weapon is, right? Aside from the fact that she can pick up mountains, Arthas was never physically that strong. Also, uh, Frostmourne, they keep saying Frostmourne was the source of Arthas's power. In, in an effort to... to, to make this seem less dumb. Well, no, it actually wasn't, because uh, may maybe some of it, but when you first pick it up in Warcraft 3, it, it basically just gives you chaos damage so that you can pierce through the defenses of Malganus. Because he's a dreadlord, you can't best him with conventional means. Because back then, there was some semblance of storytelling and powerful opponents, especially those tied to concepts of evil, couldn't be overcome simply by martial prowess. That's an old theme in literature. But then in the Undead campaign, for some reason that didn't carry over. <clears throat> and Frostmourne did not give Arthas power. In fact, Frostmourne took something away from Arthas. When he's a fledgling death knight, and he's speaking to Tychondrius, he says something to the effect of, I've killed my own father, I've betrayed my people, I've damned my kingdom, but I don't feel anything. And the Dreadlord tells him, that's because the sword you're wielding was forged to steal souls, and yours is the first it claimed. Also, in the Frozen Throne campaign, while still wielding Frostmourne, Arthas is struck by these seizures. He's racked with pain, the screen goes red, and his power begins to fade away, and it's not just in the cutscene. You actually start losing levels. You start the campaign as a fully powered level 10 death knight. You're at the level cap. Each time he goes through one of these seizures, you lose a level. And it happens because Illidan was casting a spell to tear open the Frozen Throne. It was attacking the Lich King, Ner'zhul. And consequently, Ner'zhul was having to use more and more of his power to keep himself preserved which meant Arthas got less of the power because that was the source of Arthas' power. Not Frostmourne. You have Frostmourne the whole time, but you end up like at level one by the end of it, and you're very feeble because the Lich King is fading because that was the source of the power. And only when you arrive at the base of Ice Crown Citadel does your power return because the Lich King, knowing that this is it, you either prevail against Illidan or, or he falls, returns Arthas's power. So the power was always in the Lich King. 
this Lord of the Dead, this iconic figure that Blizzard just pissed on, not Frostmourne, although maybe the blade was too good at what it did, because it certainly seems to have stolen the soul of the story of Warcraft. <sighs> I get really into stuff like this. Storytelling, especially in games. Cinematics and characters and world building and arcs and development and lore. Symbolism, resonance. I love that stuff. When it's done right, it opens a door. A door to being a nerd, maybe. Who needs symbolism when you take really long pauses between your words? And who needs character development when you can go like this? You take your world building, and I'll take my world throwing when I throw a world at you. And then you'll have to be like, where? And then you'll start glowing, and I'll be like, there. Ah! And then Sylvanas will show up, and she'll be all purple and hot. And then she can just become Miss whenever she wants to, so it entirely negates the premise of physical threats to begin with, except maybe like a big vacuum cleaner. I guess that's the only thing that can really like physically stop her because she can just become smoke on a whim or like maybe a really powerful fan. But no, because then she just become physical again. And she'd be like, no, that fan won't blow me anywhere. Except she'd be like smirking. And she'd be like, this world's a prison. And you'll be like, this world's a society. And then Tetsuo will be like, there. And then all three of them will just like start making Making out and Sylvanas will be smoke and like going into different places she's not supposed to be. Man, I hope I turn purple and hot when I die. And just staple my face into a permanent smirk. And then have like an open casket burial so I can just look smug up at people who are mourning. 